in cooperative. And as we find ourselves in cooperative, very few of us, very few of us have the opportunity to receive one form of training or the other. Activity. People don't just do anything like that. Sorry, please, if you are here, put your phone on silence. And it is a much for you to answer call. Quietly go out and answer call so that you don't uh, affect what we are doing. So, what I'm trying to say is that you discover that in modern time, things are done scientifically. But you see that in cooperative, things are still done traditionally. And if we continue like that, we are no longer going to be attractive. Is that not? So, I want, and that is the reason why you discover that cooperative is the most misunderstood institution in Nigeria. People don't understand it. Particularly those who run cooperative in community base. Even those in the government institution don't understand it. The only saving grace they have is that money is coming in and it is going out without their obstruction. But those who run it on community base, those who run it who are not in establishment, they have issues because it will take them time to convince people to become part of them. And even when they convince people to become part of them, they don't have anywhere to get the money from them, even when they play to make contributions or when they take loans to pay back. So, these are issues of compliance and it's because of the misunderstanding that is causing all this uh, problem and we intend to sort out those issues between today and uh, tomorrow. So, you now discover that in Nigeria today we have three cooperative colleges that award HND. But maybe we don't know that. Cooperative is a field of study. We have in Kaduna, we have in Enugu, and we have in Ibadan. And you also discover that those students that go to those schools are those who jam reject from other schools. And they go there because it's cooperative economics and management. So when they finish, they don't go to cooperative to work. They look for somewhere to go and work. The reason is because cooperative is not uh, attractive. Am I saying the truth? It's not as if it's not even attractive, but because people don't understand uh, it. Next slide. So, I'm trying to drive it to where we are going to. Then you now discover that today you have companies that are well registered. But this company, they do the bidding of the owner. Dangote company does the bidding of Dangote. Ote Dollar Company does the bidding of uh, Ote Dollar. If you like, buy. If you like, patronize. If you don't like, go away. Then, we brought ourselves together, formed the cooperative, and say, Dangote is selling sugar. We can equally sell sugar. Is that not? And we sell sugar in a more humane way, such that we don't put profit at the front. We can look at welfare, first of all. I'm trying to give you those areas we are more concerned about. So you now discover that the cooperative is people-centered, people-driven, and member-owned. So the people say, Ote Dola as a person can set up a shipping line. Is that not? But 10 of us can equal Ote Dola. So those things that the man is not doing well, we can do it well. And we can make it more affordable for ourselves. That is why we are talking about the issue of people-centered, Principle-driven. And the principle is where we have this issue of compliance. Most of the cooperatives, they don't run on the principle. And once you don't run on the principle, you are not complying with best practice. And what they are running is not the cooperative. So, members own it. But you've got that in some cooperative, the president is the alpha and omega. I have seen a cooperative where the law says that there are three trustees, the president, secretary, and treasurer. So when you go to open bank account, these persons must feature. And then the president will come and ask the treasurer to go away and bring in the financial secretary to be doing the work. And as a treasurer, you know it's a statutory thing, is that not? Are you not supposed to speak out so that you can take your statutory function, hand it over to you? But the treasurer says, what will she do? 
And as I tell you, the cooperative was messed up until we have to come in and revitalize the cooperative. So is is you discover that most cooperatives are not member owned. Most cooperatives, you discover that the president becomes uh, alpha and omega, and that cannot apply. And that is why when they go to banks and banks want to make sure they comply, they start shouting. I know a cooperative that went to Sterling Bank and said, the president said, I want to be so significant. And then the account of that said, for well, yeah. He shouted, why? This is not our cooperative. This is not what we want to do. They said, no, go to your bylaw and read what your bylaw says about account opening and how to maintain account in the bank. These are compliance uh, issues. You can't do that with Central Bank. As a bank, you can't do that with Central Bank. You should know that Central Bank licenses the banks. Is that not? Then the director of cooperatives licenses the cooperatives. The bank is the model of financing. The cooperative is also a model of uh, financing. Is that not? So what we are not saying is that the banks continue to look at their regulation. They continue to look at their best practice. They continue to change things from time to time. Is that not? We have changed to Nuban account number. We have changed to BVN in bank. Which one has cooperative changed? In 2015, the Nigerian Interbank Settlement System approached me and said, Oga, we want to do it in such a way that cooperatives now we have national identity in registration. So in Abuja, if you are to create a code that once you are registered, you put in your details, it will automatically generate a code for you. And that code, your members will also get their numbers from there and it becomes a national number. I didn't understand it. And because of that, I didn't lead to their ways of doing things. But as I speak with you today, I see it much more clearer. And the issue now is that the discussion we are having with interbank settlement system now is that once you are a member of cooperative, whether you have a bank account or not, you must have a BVN. Because the BVN is not bank verification uh, number. It's biometric verification number. Because the banks are the ones who took it, first of all, they not give it to their set as if it's their number. I am saying this because I am the chairman of the product committee for financial inclusion at the central bank. And as I speak with you, the bank has finished financial inclusion is concerned. The bank cannot go beyond where they are now. It is the cooperative that can go there now. The reason is because banks cannot go beyond city center. They need bricks and mortar. Is that not? They need offices, they need cars, they need so many things to function. But cooperative, do you need that? You discover that even in my village, as I speak with you, we have a cooperative. And that cooperative is affiliated to Sipan. And anything we do here, as soon as I put it, because we have a communication network, they will immediately see. So, Central Bank is not saying, why don't we work with a cooperative? So that we can deliver to the people down to the grassroots. But they cannot work with us because there are compliance uh, issues. And that is why we call this a uh, conference. So that we can look at those compliance issues. The central bank themselves is going to deliver, deliver the lead paper today. And they will be talking about one of their recent innovations, which is the e Naira, and how they can work with cooperatives. But that I am also trying to do a back in so that we don't just work with them, but something will actually work for us from the central bank. So, move, move on. So, the cooperative has an identity. And that is why I said earlier that if it is not a cooperative, then it's not a, a cooperative. So, this identity is safeguarded by the International Cooperative uh, Alliance which is headquartered in Belgium. And look at this identity, this identity statement. So by the time I read this identity statement, it's thought that if you don't comply with it, then you're not a, a cooperative. He says it's an autonomous association of persons united voluntarily to meet their common economic, social, and cultural needs and aspirations through a jointly owned and democratically controlled uh, 
enterprise. If you see what I said from day one, you will discover that most of the cooperatives in institutions, they are a subservient of the institution where they are. They don't have that autonomy. They even report themselves to the organization. Whereas, the president of that cooperative is the highest person in that cooperative. Like, lottery fund will bear me witness in 2013, there about, when Kumer was the, was the secretary of the lottery trust fund. We, I came for the AGM. The executive secretary was sitting in the audience. Because he lived all his life in Kenya, and he knows how cooperative run. And when he wanted to speak, he first the Mr. Ben and say, hey, Your Excellency, people started laughing. He said, Yes. Here, he is Oga. But when we go to the office, I become his uh, Oga. He's somebody that understands uh, cooperative. But I have seen the whereby most of the institutions, they made themselves to become an appendage of that organization. They don't have control over their affairs. Like in the, in the DSS, I have to bail them out about how many years ago. I went there and discovered that if the president of the DSS cooperative give approval, the director finance and the director legal have to give approval before their check can fly. And I say, how? And that is not a cooperative. And somebody came to me and said, ha, you gave my dog. No, no, they say DG, they watch you. I said, but I, it's, it's a gospel truth, I have to speak. And by the grace of God, when I left there, the DG removed that uh, uh, blockade. And now the, the president can give express order, and it is uh, done. So you now discover that we have issues when it comes to our identity. They are not autonomous, and that is why if you are a cooperative in an institution, staff must be in your name. If you are from NHIA, you have lost your identity. The office can clap down on you at any time. But if you say NHIA staff cooperative, you have differentiated it. It's a staff affair. Is that not? And for that reason, so if you are not like that, we have to make effort to make sure that that thing is inserted into your name. Because that is what gives you uh, control. So, and then we also look at it like it's jointly owned. It is not the president that is the owner. It's not the secretary that is the owner. When we come for meeting, it is democratically controlled in the sense that cooperators are even good parliamentarians. Because when we want to speak, we raise our hand. Is that not? And then anything we say is a motion. Waiting for, for uh, a seconder. But if there is a counter motion, then they will vote. And what the law says is that the president can vote twice. If there is a tie, the president will vote second time and we have civil majority. So what I'm trying to say in essence is that right from the statement here, we discover that we start having compliance uh, issues. And once we don't comply, that means we are dead on uh, arrival. Next slide. Then, you also see that cooperative is not an ordinary organization where you do whatever you want to do. You know that in Nigerian system, we have value issues. Is that not? We have value issues. Like today, the value of the banks are in NDIC. They will tell you that if you go to any bank and you don't see NDIC uh, certification, leave that bank. Your money is not safe. In cooperative, do you have that? Okay, we have a value problem. Now, we have a National Cooperative Development Policy, 2002. You can imagine, it's still. Policy are supposed to change every five, five uh, years. And what did the policy say? We are supposed to have a National Council on Cooperative Affairs, headed by the Honorable Minister for Writing Cooperative, which is uh, agriculture. And then, we are supposed to have that council in each state, to have the cooperative advisory board set up by the minister and set up by the governor in the state. Do we have them? Because we have information problem. We have information uh, challenge. And I tell people that I am not driven by what happens in Nigeria. 
because I belong to a committee of CEOs of cooperatives in Africa. So I see what other countries do, and they also see what I do. So even this conference, as soon as we finish now, I put it on our platform, Kenya, all those people start seeing it immediately. And they say, wow, you people are trying. So this issue of compliance stems from the value. If you look at it, it's a value. But in the traditional African society, if you don't have money, you don't have value. You can go home and be talking, and your younger one is talking, they ask you that they don't you see that the younger one is because he has uh, money. In cooperative, because when we form the National Financial Inclusion Policy, women, the program, the World Bank visited my office and they asked me, how do we treat women? I said, ah, we treat them very well. Oh. Women, do we treat you well? You are all here. Do we treat you well? The reason is because we don't have men, we don't have women in cooperative. We have members. So there is no difference between a man or a woman in cooperative. Have you ever been in cooperative and you want to speak and you say, shut up, you are a woman? Have anybody done that to you before? We are all members. So, our value is self-help. We help ourselves. Anybody you see in cooperative wants to help his or herself. Is that not? But the problem is that if we don't look at this compliance issue, this governance issue, you put all your life in the cooperative. And then you want to come and take the money, and they tell you that somebody has chopped the money. How, how is it going to look like? You started work, you have been saving the cooperative, you have about 20 million, you are retiring, you are celebrating, and then you come to the cooperative office and they say the money is not there. You know, go fall. They will carry you go village. Self responsibility. Anybody you see in cooperative has taken responsibility that it is not Buhari, it is uh, me. Is that not? Then, democracy. When you see a cooperator in a, anywhere, you will see that that cooperator is a democrat. You don't tell a cooperator to turn print. The cooperator will make a choice. And how I wish everybody is a cooperator in Nigeria. Because the problem we have in our electoral system today is that what to eat has been the problem. So when they remind you that there will be food again, you will be forced to compete for somebody. Is that not? But when you are a cooperator and you save and you take loan and you do the things you want to do, nobody will tell you who to vote for. Our value again is equality. No matter what you have in the cooperative, you are no more than the other person. When we know your weight is the volume of money you save, and the dividend that comes in because of the savings. The loans you can take because of uh, what you have in the cooperative. If not, all of us are equal before the eyes of uh, the law. Another value is equity. Equity is different from equality. Equity is your due. So in cooperative, you don't uh, take more than what you have put in. You know, we take either double or triple of what we have saved as a uh, our loan value. That is how cooperative runs. Solidarity. That's what brought all of us here today. Is that not? Then honesty. We don't need to swear. Our words is our bound. Is that not? Openness. No secret court. No hiding of things from members. I always tell people, when I give talk, I tell them that Cooperative leaders are like those who are roasting corn for a blind person. If you are roasting corn for a blind person, you must be talking. If you are not talking, that means you are eating the corn. Is that not? So in cooperative, when we meet, we tell them what is happening. If not, they, they will suspect you. Then, social responsibility. When we make money in our offices, in our environment, we always let them know that we are here. Look for something lacking and do it, and we care for others, this life. So, having spoken about that value, it's a compliance issue. Do your cooperative comply to those values? If they don't, please, when you go home, start implementing it. You still have a great period. After that great period, we will start hammering you. Then, we talk about the principles. And the principles is what we will use to declare you whether you are complying with the best practice or not. And the first 
one is voluntary and open membership. The community decides who should be a member. Then, democratic control. I have said it earlier. In your ex committee, is democratic. In your general meeting, is democratic. In your leadership, is democratic. You had the first moderator saying that in cooperative, we are not Yaya Jamin. We are not Mobutu Sesesetu. You do your own turn and you go. But there are some presidents here today that is blaming me that their tenure is getting expired. Like NHIA now. Very excellent person. As far as I'm based on my own judgment. And that is why we have stated a few of them for competing ambassador award at the upcoming international day of because they are symbol of excellence in competing. So I challenge all of you to do that so that we can recognize it. Then member economic participation. Most of the community based communities we have they will tell you we have registered the competition and the money is not coming from central bank again. Not knowing that there are compliance uh, issues. If you pick the MSME Development Fund trade route, you will see that a cooperative below one year cannot take the money. The reason is because you don't have a budget account. And then you set up your cooperative so that you can go and take money from Central Bank. Obviously, it should be taboo for the cooperative to be the principle of competition is just to get the standard point to mitigate, so like they close the gap. But when you set it up, I want to go and take money from the carbon. The carbon project is the first of the uh, model. And that is why we are here to look at what do we need to do so that we can take money from a uh, central bank and other development uh, institutions. Then autonomy and independence. I have said it earlier. Some of us don't even know. Independent. Even if they are related to the parent body, they are not associated with the parent body. Is that not? Have I ever come to your office or come to your meeting and take to me? If I come, I am as humble as I am. Is that not? I only guide you, I only advise you to make sure that you do the right uh, thing. Then, education, training, and information. That is one of the things we are doing. Competitive is put to continuously. What we do in cooperative is not what is a now, what is a bet. What we do is valuable information. Most of us say that we don't have enough because of the level of information. But if you have enough information, you discover that you are going to be doing your well. That conclusion is what is going to make us strong. That conclusion is what is going to appeal to the government, appeal to the partner that we are strong, we are movers and takers of the, the economy. Cooperatives, what we want to discuss, part of what we're going to discuss today and tomorrow concerning ease of doing business is to make sure that your cooperative move beyond the gift and credit. Today, if you go to the United Kingdom and they say cooperative is big, it's because if cooperative shut down, there will be no vegetables. I was in Israel to understand the Israeli cooperative, and I discovered that cooperative control milk. If you go to those plazas, the plazas are owned by business uh, And because we want to do this, we are bringing people who are extant impact on what we are doing to tell us where the things are. Well, the thing is to pay tax. Yes, if your cooperative move out of cooperative business to do real business, you go pay tax. Now, then you know the I say, why are you asking cooperative to collect things? I say, are we asking them to pay tax? You're not asking them to pay tax. You have staff that are working for them. And they have to be dealt to you and remit to us. Is that not? Through that number. Because you have to be relevant. 
if you don't pay tax, you are not a responsible uh, citizen. Is that not? It is when you pay. In fact, it will reach a level now that uh, we will push for tax uh, this thing to be like uh, one of the incentives for you to get a facility. Because advanced countries, the government live on tax. Is that not? In providing this thing. And then we can challenge the authorities. I can say, I am a proud Nigerian. So, it's cooperation among cooperatives and then concern for the community where we are. Then the question is that, are cooperatives in compliance with the principle? Are we in compliance? I want to hear something. Are we in compliance? If you know you are not in compliance, say no. If you know you are in compliance, say yes. Are you in compliance? Are you in compliance? No, no. <laughs> what did I will tell you is hey, true or true? <laughs> That's like. So you can see. This is a cooperative. You can see somebody wearing singlet here. No discrimination. This is in Abuja here, Kwali area camp, where we went on a feed uh, activity. And they are very happy. But the issue is that in that village setting, you discover that if you are not a member of that cooperative, you are like like a, you are like a taboo. Because you are supposed to say that peer pressure is there. If you take money from a corporate, say, ah, I have paid for that putting chair. I will be having putting chair in my house also. I have bought DSTV through the corporate. Next slide. So, we need to follow certain things for us to have to support the corporate. It's a compliance issue. The identity statement I said earlier, which was the definition of cooperative by ICA, as autonomous association of persons united voluntarily to meet their social, economic, uh, cultural needs and aspirations through a jointly owned and democratically controlled enterprise. That identity statement is your cooperative like that. Check very well. Then, you have vision, you have mission. Do our cooperative have vision and mission? I'm asking question. What is our vision? What is our mission? Vision is the bigger picture. That thing that you came together, that made you people to set up the cooperative. Ah, look at now. Christmas is coming. You can't even afford money to buy rice. They don't pay salary on time. For the past five years now, salary is not paid in December. It's not paid before Christmas. It's paid after Christmas. But when you go to federal secretary, there's a lot of activity. Rice moving up and down. Oil yeah, moving up and down. And then the civil servant will tell you that yeah, when they pay the salary, we need to pay January. So those things that push you to set up the cooperative is the vision. And we want to run this cooperative so that we can own a car. I can own a car. I can own a house. I can do this. This is the vision. It's, it's endless. It's bigger. Is that not? But the mission is to do the talk. And you don't expect that when you want to do the talk, it will be easy for you. Most of us, once you want to start the work, and then just fall back. Let me tell you. No vision is achieved at least. And that is why you see the banks every day. They change. They change strategy. Change strategy. How many times have we had strategy session in corporate? Most cooperatives are like anywhere the left is. No plan, no budget. We start the year, we wait for Akantan General. If Akantan General doesn't bring money again, we're we'll holiday. And that is why in this session, in this program, we are talking about direct debits. If, if Akantan General refuses to be done for us, we we'll start doing it on our own. What it means is all debit. On their salary account. And once salary is paid, we get our money. Most government today, especially state government, they are using cooperative money to push salary events. Our, our office in one of the North Central states called me the day before yesterday. Out of close to one billion, they are owing them, it's just for four million. They gave them last day for state government. Using cooperative money to reduce the wage of salary. Once they re if, if the wage bill is 4 billion and cooperative money is 1 billion, once they get 3 billion, then cooperative payment arrest. Then we now say, 
Please don't be done for us again. We have debit. debit. Who did salary pay to their bank account? Once they hit their account, highest maybe they will charge 15 naira per person. Is that not? And then sometimes the corporate can even go and negotiate with the bank and say, hey, we are bringing people that deduction will be done. Uh, to give me for each of them. I beg for each 15 naira, give us 15 naira from each side. Now we did. Now, like, you can have such a problem with your bank. That is what most corporates are doing on their POS now. They share the money with their bank, agency banking, and the corporate become a bank. So, plan. We have a plan. Five years plan. Strategic plan. Do we have a plan? He who fails to plan has plan to fail. That's why I say anywhere belief is. As soon as they, they say there's giving loan in Bank of Agri. Meanwhile, agriculture was never their plan. So when you give them agri loan, they will chop it. So we are saying we need to plan. Our bylaws. Some cooperative today, I tell you. The bylaws are not signed by the director. And according to the act, if the director does not sign your bylaw, it's not a law. Because the director is a state agent. And once you put the seal, it becomes a bylaw. Stronger, even more than what the is giving because it's a bylaw. But you go to some cooperative today, your, your president and secretary will just sign on that. God bless you. Any issue in court. You will know what we are talking about. So, jail straight. So, if your bylaw is not signed by your director of cooperative in your state, take it to him or her to sign it so that it will not start having a effect. Then, we talk about plans to make members happy, to make members committed. And, like I told you earlier, my office is the chairperson of the product committee for financial inclusion in central bank my home book said she that committee so today now cooperative is not about credit and savings cooperative is about products through cooperative you can have pension you can have housing you can have agriculture we are giving access to land access to input access to markets making life uh, easy so that when you join the cooperative it's just for you to choose from among those things that are there, which one do I want to do. And the problem is because most cooperative leadership, they have never made any effort to come out of their cocoon. They assume that they know. And they do so many things ignorantly. How many of them have run to me? Eh, we open account in the bank. We have put money. The bank says we cannot withdraw the money. <laughs> Some of them are not even affiliated to us. I said, give me the number of the account uh, officer. I will call. And the reason is because you are not uh, informed. And if you are not informed, you are informed. So we have to form programs that will make our members happy. And when they are happy, they now become uh, committed to the corporate. <coughs> then we must emphasize good governance. The corporate is supposed to be properly governed. And I used to tell people, if you go to the U.S. today, it's not because we have sense as president of the U.S., but it's a system that if you don't do well, the system will kick you out. If your, if your, if your behavior becomes unpresidential, it will kick you out. So, we must entrench good governance. And one of the efforts we are doing today is to bring in technology. And those who are using technology in cooperative today will discover that your accounts are properly managed, real time. As executive of the cooperative, you cannot do more than what you're supposed to do. There are some places that the president is combining his work and the secretary's work and sidelining the, the secretary because there is no uh, compliance. There is no technology. They have not complied with the modern way of doing things. Whereby everybody runs on password. And we are saying cooperatives have to comply to make sure that if you run a cooperative account, it's like a bank account. Once you query it, load the app, you query it, you see your cooperative, you see your balance, and it moves. Make your mind cool. You 
can book loan there. And you can also get results from there. Then the executive, from wherever they are, they can do it. But we are saying that if the cooperative does not comply with technology, very soon it will become unattractive. Why is cooperative competing with all these, uh, uh, those who give shark, those loan shark? Today our cooperative is competing with them. Is it a lie? Is it a lie? Let me tell you one of the things we have done for compliance. We have made it such a way to do that if your cooperative give loan, those loan can be registered on credit bureau. Most of your members take loan from you and still go to take loan from the bank. And you do that account in general, honor bank loan than cooperative loan. That is the reason why they took one million from you and they took 500,000 from microfinance bank and they are paying the 500,000, they are not paying the one million. What does it take you? Give loan, you upload. So that when they are doing a credit search on them, they will see that, ah, you are owing Ministry of Finance Cooperative. You say, how you carry loan now? Ah, because I applied for loan, you started going to look for me everywhere. You say, no, it's on the credit system. You are owing. So it will even reduce what the person is supposed to take elsewhere or completely disqualify the person for taking additional loan so that you can get your money on time. That was why in November last year, during the SIPAN summit, we brought in the credit bureau. And as I speak with you, some of our cooperatives are already uh, on board. So if you want to reduce the risk of non-payment of your loan and the risk of not paying at all, please imbibe credit bureau as one of the compliance uh, issues. Then this cooperative need money. Ordinarily, when you form a cooperative, right from day one, you're supposed to have a capital gain by selling shares, minimum shares. But most of our cooperatives are not set up based on that compliance. We are set up on just pay money. And because of that, we don't have seed fund. If you look at the microfinance policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria, cooperative is an MFI. But now for math, now we will be MFI. Is it not true what is there? So, even if you have passed that stage from the sector, but there's another way you can still get shares if you want to do a particular business. When I see a cooperative want to do housing, they start running around looking for money from somewhere. Why? You can set up a housing finance within the cooperative and ask people to subscribe to it and have a housing plan that in the next five years we are going to build 300 units. And what it means that maybe in every year we are building 100-100 or 50-50. And then we are turning it over. <coughs> if you even set up that fund and you don't have enough, then you can borrow from outside to join to it. And then once you do that, the mortgage system, as we are building, the mortgage will be paying. And the burden will return to the mortgage while you are building continuously. You want to do agri, you go and for anchor borrower. For what? And then they will collect your data, collect everything, collect everything. At the end, they have not given you the loan, but your name is on credit bureau that they are owed 50000 for uh, a hectare. And say, how? They say, eh, that time they uploaded your this. We are you not giving? You have to struggle to come out of it. But what about the cooperative having an agri program? that will be providing from people from uh, time to time. I tell you that once you have such things in place, then you can talk with your bank. You can talk with any development finance institution to support you in whatever that you are doing. Then we have to strengthen the cooperative movement. I sit down, I ask myself this question. Are we a movement, actually? I don't think we are a movement. The labor is a movement. The current peace we have now, financially, is labor that causes it. And the man who is the labor president now, don't try him. When you say the banks, they are going to close, they are going to plant. Filling stations, 
We are also going to plan for you. I give you seven days. That is available. Where is it in the police station? That is movement talking. Okay. Is that not? If we are a movement, take for example in FCT, we have our database. Minister of FCT, we are one million members in FCT here, and we want to build housing for these one million people in the next five years. And we have appointed a development partner. Can you give us a parcel of land in each of the area councils? We want to we want to be building five five hundred units in each area council or whatever. And the minister will not give it. But because we are supposed to be the movement, but we are not. And what it means, there are compliance issues. You ask some cooperative, they say, I, 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 you don't want to be part of the affairs body. So we will come and ask you, uh, what is going to be our benefit if we are there? Then the question is that, you know, what, what benefit do you have? So, that cooperative movement must be strengthened before you can have a good management. Then we must improve communication. Most of you, before you came here, you see that on a regular basis, you had broadcast informing you about uh, the conference. About the conference. That is how it's supposed to be in our cooperative. We need to recognize people's birthday, recognize people's effort on a regular basis. And once you do that, you see that the bonding will be there. And then there must be cordial relationship between the management. Although in management circle, they will tell you that anytime board members come out of a board meeting and they are laughing, they have finished the organization. That means they have shared the money. Is that not? They must be one small foreign so that uh, anytime they want to steal money, <laughs> it will not be easy. But anytime one of them are laughing, but it not happen. But what we are saying is that that cordiality must still be there. Is that not? It must not be rancorous. Then there must, beyond your bylaw in your property, there must be a manual. If you go to National Assembly today, you discover that National Assembly members have what they call uh, grand rules. And that is why when Dino Malaye fought that time, they suspended him. Because part of their, <laughs> part of their, uh, that he must not uh, fight at the uh, chamber. So what I'm trying to say in essence is that if our cooperative is going to be successful, we must look at things like this. Next slide. Then somebody called me and say, eh, they say we should remove the word "limited" from our name. The reason is because they don't have enough information. Cooperatives are like companies. The word limited means that a cooperative is known for its assets and liability. It doesn't go beyond that to encroach on the on the this thing, on the on the assets of either the officer officers or the members. So anything they do in the ambit of what they have in the cooperative. And it is the law that says that. <coughs> cooperative Act, that is why it's there. 2004 Cap 98 LFM. Just like you have the Company and Allied Matters uh, Act. But most of the cooperative executives do not know <coughs> that they have a law. In fact, I have gone to cooperative AGM. We are auditors, we quote Company and Allied Matters Act as its topics. Everything that is obtained in the company and allied matters at are the cooperative. But the only thing that we need to do is compliance. And that is why we are here today. So that act gives the cooperative the opportunity to have a common seal. As a cooperative, you should have a seal. As a cooperative, you can own property. Is that not? Movable and immovable. In FCT here, you see that in the last four years, there was a tussle in FCT here. When our registrar came and said we should register in cooperative, we registered. And then we say it's a lie. It took an informed movement, an informed movement to stop her. He said, You can't do that. The registration we have, according to the Act, is of perpetual succession. So, where are you coming from? Are you the first registrar in town? 
and then we organized. We brought in AIT, we brought in the media. Before you know, we laughed. Kenya will call me and say, Atama, push! That is how we do it in Kenya here. Organize town hall meeting. But that's the one that is different from the normal one. <laughs> so, before you know, the, the, the <coughs> Minister of State came in. And today we have our peace. If not, I tell you, we would have been registering corporate with every year. And then they brought a pseudo consultant that is one of them in the office there that we are paying consultancy fee to. So, what happened was we had a very strong movement. We got the support of all of you, and today we have our peace. Is that not? They are even going to the co cooperative to go and pick their listing. We stop it. So, what I'm saying is that these acts are we in compliance with? Have we one day look at the acts? Move on. Yes, sir. So, we must get our cooperative rights. All these things will be passed to your email. So, if you don't, if you don't write your email, well, better go and write it well. Uh, possibly with capital letter, because I see that most of our guys are here. I don't want to take too much time. So, the, the cooperative recognize some parties. If you are a cooperative in the ministry and you are running perpetually on executive, you are not yet strong. Cooperative are designed to create jobs. That is why if you go to some cooperatives today, the executive have few things to do. They are politicians. Kenya call them politicians. It is, they have staffs. Is that not? The staff do the day-to-day -day activity. Why the executive supervise? Like NASA today, if you go there, you will see that they have staff. I've conducted the performance management uh, the training for the staff. So most of the cooperatives, when you go there, you will see them. Even the NHIA, even police service commission. At the point, they move out of the ministry and, and stay on their own. So that they can do their thing. So, they must be members. They must be part of directors, which is the executive. They must be a manager. And then they will be workforce. And that is why, if you want to comply with tax as a cooperative, it's for you to deduct pay from your staff and remit to the tax office. Not that they are taxing your surplus. You know, we don't have profit in cooperative. We have a surplus. It's after meeting our needs, whatever that is left, that, and so, the FIRS, you don't look at our surplus, so. Because the money in cooperative are already tax uh, fund. The money we contribute in cooperative is after you have been done paying. So we can't pay twice. Is that not? All right. Then the supreme authority in any cooperative is the members. They say it's wrong. And you know, some of us don't understand it. You have opportunity to make law. The only thing the director do for you is to assent to it when it does not conflict with the act, the director have a relation to sign. Is that not? So you are the one that makes your law. But discover that because we don't have a strong movement, you go to some cooperative office, the, uh, the director will give you a bylaw. For what? There was a time they gave us bylaw in FCT here, it's agri bylaw. And my cooperative is built and credit. Went to the bank to ask us, ah, but we're not doing agri. So, part of what we started doing here in the FCT now is to make sure that you have a bylaw that is akin to what you are doing. Then, if you want to choose people, I told them in Teachers Religion Council that the security man is the most popular person in any organization. And if he's a cooperative member, are you going to appoint him as your president? He can't approve the chief executive. So, that's why the fact that we are in a democracy, we must choose somebody that has competence. Most people that have good, good standing can negotiate our desires. We look at that and then inclusion of people who are in the board. In one cooperative in Abuja here, I stopped somebody from becoming president and I told him I want to go to court with him if he wants to go. Why? He has 200,000 in the cooperative, but his loan value is 2 million. And for the past three years, he has not paid the full worth of the money. And he wants to become the president of the cooperative as a company. And I stood my ground, I signed, and I said, I want to go anywhere. 
today the cooperative is functioning very well because we brought somebody that has integrity to run the cooperative. You know, the thing of a man is based on what you do. And this thing is our collective investment. I listened to Uniwon, the GMD of uh, NMPC, when they innovated the microfinance bank for NMPC cooperative. He was a member of the cooperative and he said, the team is our collective investment. We must guide it uh, jealously. And that is the reason why people that we put in leadership position, they must be people that will not see money. It's somebody that will not be seeing money. And then you see, his salary is what he's seeing, his salary is 50,000. And you make him president of a cooperative that has, he's seeing 50 million every month. All of it. So what you need to do is to build to build a structure that he alone cannot go and take money. Okay? And that is why we are here to discuss uh, those things and enlighten the minds. Then, <clears throat> they, they should know their responsibility. Training and development of board members very, very important. The executives are the board members of their organization. Is that not? Some of you are even earning more than what microfinance banks are earning. When you see MD of microfinance bank, you may be doing like this. But you may not be getting up to what you are getting. Is that not? But because they are microfinance bank, they are governed by bank standards. Is that not? But the corporate, what are your standards? So, we should continue to develop ourselves. I am very happy that the president of NAM is here. And the executive secretary also. Very soon they will come to the high school. What is NAM? National Association of Microfinance Banks. He is here. And you he will hear from him. So, we should continue to develop ourselves. We should continue to interact. You know that when we go out and meet with people, we see the inadequacies in ourselves. Is that not? And then we go and correct ourselves. But if we remain in our cocoon, we will continue to remain in the video game and be doing things wrong and see things are standing that we are doing the Right. Then, in our we should make effective use of committees. Get people involved. Let people be involved in decision uh, making. Then, tenure. I said it earlier. We are not supposed to be Yaya Jami. We are not supposed to be uh, Mobutu Seseseko. Do your own part and leave. Do you know that there's something I've observed? If you look at uh, President Jonathan, He's looking more robust now than when he was in the office. When you are in office, there is too much pressure. Do. And when you leave, I'm telling you what you have done will pay you. But you discover that we want to remain in office. Every time we are changing age, age declaration, you declare until your, your own child, senior you, only, you senior your own child by 10 years. So among the board members, there must be good relationship. Relate well. There is a polite way to insult somebody. Is that not? There are certain things that somebody politely, the person, next slide. Happy people. You can see their booty. They are in their cooperative. And they make a lot of influence in the economy. Next slide. This is where the issue is. Most cooperative end of the year is a problem. They are the mercy of financial sector. Say, na, na the office work, na in Karimi, come Abuja, no be cooperative work. Oh. Situation whereby the cooperative is organized and you have a technology. Like the type we have now, the unified cooperative uh, platform. In fact, the, the, the user is even proud to say, I am running cooperative with technology. Is that not? As you put in, at the end of the year, you, uh, with the moon, you press report. You can generate any form of report you, have, you want. At the end of the year, you can hold your AGM as soon as uh, possible. So you now discover that cooperative is Because I used to tell people, even in the U.S., if not because of system, their president would have been more corrupt than any president. But they have systems that checkmate them. They have systems that do not allow them to do something wrong. 
And that is why technology is a very, very important thing. And I know that there are cooperatives here that have invested heavily on cooperatives. On, on, on uh, technology, one of our cooperative presidents here, Mr. Dada, I, I went to his office and it was wow what he did in cooperative. They can even pay bills from their cooperative platform. They can do so many things like banks. And like I said earlier, the cooperative is a model. It's a model of, you know, you have the alternative finance, is that not? The Islamic model of finance, is that not? You have the commercial, the, the regular financing model, and we have the cooperative model. But why we are holding this conference is that if we don't hold this conference very soon, this our system will become unattractive. People will no longer like it. Because they can go to sharp sharp, chim, 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 and get loans. They can do whatever they are doing. Is that not? They can see what they are doing. But our cooperative is not providing that. Especially those who are not willing to imbibe uh, technology. So it's a compliance issue that we need to treat. So cooperatives play a greater role in this uh, uh, technology play a greater role in this direction. Next slide. Then, I recall the chairman of ICPC about four years ago when I had audience with him. He said, your cooperative are still bringing this food here. Whereas, we did the cooperative act. There are rules of uh, engagement. When your cooperative issue, if you have issue in your cooperative, even if it's against the president, you will have to report it to the to the to the to the city. Because we write to the secretary. Then they bring it up at management meeting. And if it's the president that is involved, they ask you to excuse the management. They take a decision which they communicate. So if the member is not satisfied with that decision, he will appeal to the general house during the general meeting. And that's why as a cooperative you will have no less than three general meetings. Minimum three general meetings quarterly. Then crown the fourth one with AGM. So during this quarterly meeting, you appeal to the general house that this is what I'm facing. And the general house can take a decision on that issue. But if you are not satisfied with general house, the law says that you appeal to the director who have a standing arbitration panel in his office that will look into the matter. Then the decision, according to the law, is like a decision of the high court of the state. If you are not satisfied with the director, then you appeal to the minister of FCT in the case of FCT. In the case of the state, you appeal to the government. And the minister of FCT is always assisted by the Secretary of Agriculture and Rural Development, who is commissioner equivalent in FCT, into the matter. And in the case of the state, the commissioner in charge of uh, the cooperative. Then, after that, you can go to court. I want to believe that how hard you are, having passed through three, four stages, you will not come down. Most cooperative litigations are referred by the director, by the court. Most litigators that go to EFCC, ICPC, are returned back to the director because you need to give them information that will aid them to take decisions. But most of us, we are not aware of this. And that is why most of the time we are being cheated. We have issues with our cooperative, but we don't know how to go about uh, it. So to crown it all today, move, move. We <coughs> are already involved in financial inclusion. And because we are involved in financial inclusion, we discover that our own does not matter. And I said it earlier. The commitments that we know they are optimum when it comes to issue of financial inclusion. If you look at the current document 3.0, we are looking at the last mile. And Central Bank is saying that <clears throat> what role can cooperative play at the grassroots? And that is why you see the concept of agency banking and all these things are going to help. Cooperatives, we bank money, we keep money. So your bank, they are supposed to be your agent of your bank in your 
village where you are. So that any transaction you do there will reflect at the national level. I recall when we were doing CHIP, Government Enterprise Empowerment Program. I was the cluster manager for FCT. And our cooperative members always... I know some banks that even came to us and say, ah, ah, how are you doing it now? We're not going through. But we have the app deployed to us from uh, uh, one of the uh, this thing, through Bank of Industry. And our cooperatives don't, we're not going to the bank. They pick the form from us, they fill it, return it to us, we send it to to uh, the Bank of Industry, they process, and as soon as they are through, they send them text message. And then the bank we're working with, Sterling Bank, kept with me at any particular time, not less than a thousand each year. They will come. And I have staff who are sub agent with me. And then they will, uh, they will, they will uh, make the ATM card work for them. And they will go to the bank and withdraw money. If they want to pay, they will come and pay to us. We wire it and they will get a lot from selling bank. That is the kind of thing that they To seek our banks to make sure that our frequency going to the bank, spending money, all we do, our bank is with us. And things are happening. And we are relevant. So that the bank don't look down on us. I have personally made a submission to Central Bank. I think about three years ago. About the connection between cooperatives, microfinance bank, and the commercial banks. And that is why you see that now <coughs> we are very much together. I told you earlier that the president of NAM is here, the executive secretary is here. If we don't do that partnership till tomorrow, <coughs> we are the ones suffering ourselves. As far as I'm concerned, with the little I know, government has set out a broad policy. They have put everything in place. It is left for us to handle it in a way that it will be rewarding to us. And that is why today you see that the central bank is presenting. This one presenting is not a paper. This one cannot be a paper when central bank presents paper. This one is just agenda setting. Today we have we have a model in Naira. <coughs> and central bank is talking with us. As for me, what I told the director the other day is that it's a deal. Is that not? It's a deal. We have to showcase to Central Bank the strength of cooperative. I tell you that there was a time we were submitting our monthly returns from the cooperative. We created a link that every month, cooperative will enter how much they got and then how much they gave out as loan. You know that every month, Abuja here alone, we don't generate less than 4 million. Central Bank are there, So if we start sending such information to them, they will see the cooperative, see how much you are saving. Because whatever makes money savings so from the pool of savings you lend. The central bank can say, okay, complete are like four billion every month. Okay. So uh, what you need to do? Then like uh, hundred billion. Let's give it to them to expand their lending power. Then give them like one or two years to pay back. What it means that more money will be available to our people. Is that, and before we can do that, we must be compliant. Is that not? And one of the ways we can get the trust of central bank is to use their products. Is that not? So after this program, we set up a committee, follow central bank, bumper to bumper. And before we move, Central Bank so much like cooperative. That is why my humble self, I chair the committee. Product working group. Three years that ran into COVID. We have a product, the National Cooperative Development Fund. There was nothing Central Bank did not do to make us to start it. And what did the fund say? That fund is supposed to give us loan. That fund to go to stand as collateral. In CIFAN alone, you know, we have over 5 million members. If these 5 million members contribute a thousand, it is 5 million. 
And if we do it for one year, it's about 60 million. We need to look for money for anywhere. Will any bank not see that money and come and be looking for us? <laughs>